In your whole lives, my lords, were you never entertained with so much ingenuity, my lord Epimonus, having at once mended all the faults of travelers? For first, whereas they are abominable liars, he hath not told you except some malicious body have misinformed him concerning poor spy one syllable of falsehood. And secondly, whereas they never fail to give the upper hand in all their discourses unto foreign nations still jostling their own into the kennel, he bears an honor unto his country that will not dissolve in Cephalonia nor be corrupted with figs and melons, which I can assure you is no ordinary obligation, and therefore hold it a matter of public concernment that we be no occasion of quenching my lord's affections, nor is there any such great matter between us, but might, methinks, be easily reconciled. For though that which my lord gained by sitting in the house, I steadfastly believe, as he can affirm, was gotten fairly, yet dare I not, nor do I think that upon consideration he will promise so much of for uh, other gamesters, especially when they were at it so high, as he in intimates not only to have been in use, but to be like enough to come about again. Wherefore, I say, let them throw with boxes, for unless we will be below the politics of an ordinary, there is no such bar unto cogging. It is known unto his lordship that our game is most at a throw, and that every cast of our dice is in our suffrages, nor will he deny that partiality in a suffrage is downright cogging. Now, if the Venetian boxes be the most sovereign of all remedies against the same cogging, is it not a strange thing that they should be thrown first into the fire by a fair gamester? Men are naturally subject unto all kinds of passion. Some you have that are not able to withstand the brow of an enemy, and others that make nothing of this are less of proof against that of a friend. So that if, you, if your suffrage be barefaced, I dare say you shall not have one fair cast in twenty, but whatever a man's fortune be at the box, he neither knoweth whom to thank nor whom to challenge. Wherefore, that my lord may have a charitable opinion of the choice affection which I confess to have above all other beauties, for that of incomparable Venice, there is in this way of suffrage no less than a demonstration that it is the most pure. And the purity of the suffrage in a popular government is the health, if not the life of it, seeing the soul is no otherwise breathed into the sovereign power than by the suffrage of the people. Wherefore, no wonder if Postellus be of opinion that this use of the ball is the very same which that, or with that which was of the bean in Athens, or that others, by the text concerning Eldad and Medad, derive it from the commonwealth of Israel. There is another thing, though not so material unto us, that my lord will excuse me if I be not willing to yield, which is that Venice subsisteth only by her situation. It is true that a man in time of war may be more secure from his enemies by being in a citadel, but not from his diseases. Wherefore, the first cause, if he live long, is his good constitution, without which his citadel were to little purpose, and it is no otherwise with Venice. With this speech the, of the Archon, I conclude the proof of the agrarian and of the ballot being the fundamental laws of this commonwealth, and come now from the center to the circumferences or orbs, whereof some have already been shown, as how the parishes annually pour themselves into the hundreds, the hundreds into the tribes, and the tribes into the galaxies, the annual galaxy of every tribe consisting of two knights and seven deputies, whereof the knights constitute the senate, the deputies 
the prerogative tribe, commonly called the people, and the Senate and the people constitute the sovereign power or parliament of Oceania. Wherefore, to show that the parliament, what the parliament is, I must first open the Senate and then the people or prerogative tribe.